Gardner Minshew may go into today's game with a lighter load than he's carried the entire season. Stay with me on this. All of this was sparked in my head. I've been thinking about it more and more every day because of a comment on my last video about the injury report. Somebody wrote, uh, Jim Holtzlander wrote, my thought is now Gardner has no pressure to force balls to Adams. Might be a good thing. <clears throat> there was 25 replies under that. I almost didn't reply because I, I love all the comments, but I've been overwhelmed trying to respond to them. But I did try to respond to this one, and that forced me to actually think about it. That is a lot of pressure to have one of the top wide receivers in the NFL as a quarterback, whether that receiver is a diva or not. I don't think Devontae Adams is a diva. I watched Receiver on Netflix and all that. I think he's a competitor, and it's got to be frustrating when you're one of the top in the NFL and there's still so much that's out of your control. What you do control is getting open and routing people up, and you do that, and if the, if the line isn't there, you know, the blocking isn't there, if the, if the ball isn't coming the right way, there's, there's only so much you can do there. So that's very frustrating. He's also come from a line of that not usually being the issue with the Packers and having Rodgers all those years. And so I get that part of it. But again, I, I don't think Devontae's a, a, a diva, and I don't think he um, puts negative pressure on anybody. But that's just pressure in and of itself. So it made me kind of think about that and step in his shoes mentally for a second there. Just of quarterbacks in general. If you have a great supporting cast, it's almost higher strung. And is that a double standard in some ways, I wonder? Not a great wide receiver, but you have a great quarterback. I don't think you wear as much issue on that because people are quick to blame. Oh, well, he didn't have a supporting cast. So the point I'm getting to with this Gardner Minshew's norm, his comfort zone, maybe if you will, is to come off the bench when the starter gets injured and come through and he impresses people because he's better than most backup quarterbacks. Like he's, he's a good quarterback. And so the whole Minshew magic and Minshew mania thing, like that was because nobody expected Gardner Minshew to do much of anything. On top of that, he's got an awesome personality and an awesome look. He's like a throwback to the 1970s or 80s with his mustache, his whole demeanor. He's a really cool dude. I'm a huge Gardner Minshew fan, regardless of how the season goes or the rest of his career. When I, I didn't really look into everything. I knew of Minshew magic and all that when it happened way back. But when I watched him on the one rush or the, the rush pod on Max Crosby's podcast, at first I, I lean in and I'm like, is this, is he putting this act on? Is this, is he playing a character? And it's like, oh, no, I can always see it in the eyes. That's really who this is. And it made me so interested in the dude. He's very, he's different, man. And, it, and I love it. I love his personality. He's our, he's our simple Southern slinger man. So he usually steps into the games and there's not, it's almost like when you know you're thru, thrust into a bad position, you didn't have all the time in the world, you have a little bit of this pressure that rolls off of you because it's like nobody's expecting anything from me anyways. You know, it's, it's not the greatest conditions. Let's just go out there. It kind of throws the pressure off in a weird way. But uh, again, Gardner Minshew has this, I, I would imagine his brain chemistry has got something similar going on to that of like Matthew McConaughey, where it's just, everything's kind of just water off the duck's back, you know? And you can kind of see that when he goes into the game. I think that's the thing that makes him a gamer. People have always said that, you know, Gardner Minshew's a gamer. He's a gamer. He doesn't have all the looks, maybe not all the, um, you know, the elite size and strength and, uh, you know, or arm strength and speed and all those things, but he's a gamer. And I think a big part of that is he doesn't feel the pressure on game days, you know? And I think the only way a guy like that does start to feel the pressure and does get confined and railroaded into, you know, you have to do it this way was the talk tracks we were hearing in the beginning of the season about Gardner Minshew being named the guy because he's got the experience. We just don't want him to turn the ball over. I think that's the worst thing you can do for a guy like Gardner Minshew is have him, his focus be, hey, man, just play, play it safe. We just want you to, you know, just don't screw anything up. Don't turn the ball over. Make smart decisions. Get it to Devontae. Point guard the whole thing out. It sounds great on paper, but one of my favorite things about him is that he's, he's reckless, is that he's risky. I want that. He's got a similar kind of risky, reckless style of play to Brett Favre. 
where he's just hucking it up there. Yeah, it's going to lead to some interceptions. It's going to lead to some bad plays here and there. But more often than not, having the looseness of that mentality is going to, it's going to lead into a net positive, especially for his style of play, and he's proved he's done that. He's a great play-action quarterback. He's great when he's got time and buys himself time. He can buy himself some time. He's good at moving around the pocket and buying time and improvising, and he finally got the chance to do that against Baltimore, airing it out 38 times, and then you get to see, even if you have to play it safe, like there's things that happen when you're passing that many times. He had to run around. He had that good one on the sideline to Devontae. Um, but when you don't have a run game and you, you can't establish that at all, you can't really establish the play action pass. You can't establish some of these things that will buy you some more time because the, the defense isn't going to respect the run. They're not going to respect the run, the play action pass. We've all seen it. We've been trying to force the run, trying to force the run, even though it's not there, it's not there. And then we get in these third and long situations that aren't good for us. I think we just let them air it out, dude. We, we let them go, let it, let it rip. Uh, the best Gardner Minshew is the one that is just himself. You don't, you don't try to confine them. You let the broken plays be broken plays and let some magic happen. Gardner Minshew is no stranger to non-ideal circumstances. And I think he thrives in them. He thrives in dangerous scenarios. And you got to just let him be him and let him let it loose and Uncle Rico it and let it rip, man. Let him toss it over that mountain. Uh, because that's where his special comes from. It's It comes from broken plays. It comes from improvising and... Again, he, he doesn't seem rattled, <laughs> whether that is, is fine-tuned and trained in or he's just kind of got that neurochemistry. I love it. I love the guy. I think he's awesome. And um, I'm believing for the best today. You know, we can, we can go negative Nancy all day long, but anything can happen on any day in football. We saw it last week. You know, unfortunate loss, but anybody can be up, anybody can be down on any, any day. We got to come in with our heads right, and if we don't come back swinging after what happened last week, I don't know what is going to do it from a mentality perspective. I think we come in swinging, come in home, hungry to get that first win at our home stadium in front of our fans. The bottom line: as long as we don't try to force the run if it's not there, and we don't try to force Gardner Minshew to be a quarterback that he's not, and just let him Uncle Rico that thing 40 plus times and say throw it all away, I think that puts us in the best position. And I think that we could get the best quarterback play out of him and the authentic player that he is if that's how we go about it. I could be wrong, though. Y'all let me know. Hit me, in, hit me below. Tell me what you think. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Go Raiders, man. Let's get this dub, baby.